Welcome to an example of undamped force motion of a mass on a spring. We'll be solving this problem using the formulas below that we derived in a previous lesson. A 10 kilogram mass is attached to a spring with a spring constant of 40 newtons per meter. There is no damping and the forcing function is big F of t equals eight cosine four t. The object is initially at the equilibrium position and is given an initial velocity downward of 0.2 meters per second. We'll be using the differential equation mx double prime plus cx prime plus kx equals big F sub zero times cosine of omega one t to model the motion of the mass, where m is the mass, c is the damping or friction constant, which in this case will be zero because there's no damping, k is the spring constant, and big F sub zero times cosine of omega one t is the forcing function. Since c is equal to zero, we can simplify the differential equation as shown below, where we have mx double prime plus kx equals big F sub zero times cosine of omega one t, with omega sub zero equal to the square root of k divided by m. This is important because if omega sub zero equals omega sub one, the general solution will have the form shown here on the left. If omega sub zero doesn't equal omega sub one, the general solution will have the form shown here on the right. Going back up to our problem, since the mass m is 10 and the spring constant k is 40, and the forcing function is big F of t equals eight cosine four t, the differential equation is 10 x double prime plus 40 x equals eight cosine of four t. We could divide both sides by 10 and write the differential equation as x double prime plus four x equals 0 0.8 cosine four t, but there's no need here because we'll be using the formulas below. We also know the object is initially at the equilibrium position, which means x sub zero equals zero, and the initial velocity is downward at a rate of 0 0.2 meters per second, which indicates x prime of zero equals 0 0.2. Notice here the initial velocity is positive because the velocity is downward. From here we know the general solution x of t is equal to the complementary solution x sub c plus a particular solution x sub p. But again, in this example, we're just using the formulas below. So again, listing out all the given information, we know the mass m is 10, we know the spring constant k is 40, we know c, the damping constant is zero, because the forcing function is big F of t equals eight cosine four t, big F sub zero is eight, and omega sub one is four. And now we need to determine omega sub zero, which again is equal to the square root of k divided by m, omega sub zero equals the square root of four, which is equal to two. Notice in this case, omega sub zero is two, omega sub one is four, omega sub zero doesn't equal omega sub one, and therefore the general solution will be in the form shown here on the right at the bottom. So now we simply perform substitution into the formula for the general solution. We substitute two for omega sub zero, eight for big F sub zero, 10 for M, again two for omega sub zero, and four for omega sub one. Which gives us the general solution x of t, simplifying the coefficient of cosine four t, we have negative one fifteenth, and therefore the general solution in simplified form is x of t equals c sub one cosine two t plus c sub two sine two t minus one fifteenth cosine four t. Notice for the first two trig functions, the angle is two t because the angle is omega sub zero t, and for the last trig function, the angle is four t because the angle is omega one t. And now we use initial conditions to determine c sub one and c sub two. Let's do this on the next slide. Using x of zero equals zero, we substitute zero for t and set the function value equal to zero. When t equals zero, we have c sub one times cosine zero, which is c sub one times one, giving us c sub one. And then we have c sub two times sine zero, but sine zero is zero, this term drops out. And then we have minus one fifteenth times cosine zero, giving us minus one fifteenth, and this must equal zero. Solving, we have c sub one equals one fifteenth, and now we substitute one fifteenth for c sub one. And now before we can use x prime of zero equals zero point two to determine c sub two, we need to find x prime of t, which I've already done here. You may want to pause the video and verify this. It does require the chain rule. And now since x prime of zero equals zero point two, we substitute zero for t and set the function value equal to zero point two. First term drops out because sine zero is zero. Third term also drops out because sine zero is zero. In the middle term we have two, 
times c sub 2 times cosine 0, which gives us 2 c sub 2, which must equal 0 0.2 or 2 tenths. Multiplying both sides by 1 half, we have c sub 2 equals 1 tenth. And now we substitute 1 tenth for c sub 2, which gives us the equation that models the motion of the mass. We have x of t equals 1 15th cosine 2t plus 1 tenth sine 2t minus 1 15th cosine 4t. Before we go, let's look at the graph of x of t. Here it is. Remember, when x of t is positive, the mass is below the equilibrium position, and when x of t is negative, the mass is above the equilibrium position. I hope you found this helpful.